In this video, you will learn the foundation and fundamentals of CSS and you will transform a photo gallery from something that's completely unstyled to a full working gallery that you can interact with and hover over it with cool effects. Let's get started. Hello there. Okay, so if you connect to this, we'll be using this HTML here to style it and we'll create the photo gallery from here. So if you connect to this link, it will be in the description. Then you'll be able to use the template for the photo gallery. So let's get started now. What is CSS? HTML is the what, what's there, the nouns. CSS is the adjectives. JavaScript is the doing, the verbs. So CSS is the styling, cascading style sheets. That's what it stands for. We want to style our gallery. How do we do that? Well, or our page. We can type control slash to get a comment. This is a comment in CSS. And I'll write the syntax of CSS here. So selector, and then selector, and then inside property value. That is the, this is how you find the element, and this is what you do with the element. So the first selector is a universal selector, which I'm going to name here. Now you can view it here. This will be in the description too. Basically, the universal selector matches elements of any type, so pretty much everything. Get everything. Select everything. Cool. So we're going to make everything Calibri like, which is a built in font, like that. And now it looks a lot better. Tag selector. What is a tag selector? Well, let's say we want to select section or image. Well, we're going to select image, so we type IMG. That's it. This is the tag name of the HTML element. So this assumes you already have a bit of HTML knowledge. So cursor. We're going to use cursor pointer, so when we hover over the image, we don't need to memorize these properties, by the way. You'll learn them as you go along. Just the selectors will do. They're the what you should memorize, the selectors. The properties will come with practice. And you can find them a lot easier, a lot more easily. So if we hover, we get cursor pointer. Look at that. And if we remove it, what happens now is we don't get cursor pointer. So. On code pen, you can just press control, sh um, control slash, and it will toggle that. Now we're going to add max width, two five six pixels. So now it's in a reasonable order here. This restricts the image size or width, and the height usually follows to two hundred fifty six pixels. If we press control shift C, hover over it, we get the height which is 256 pixels. I believe these images are fixed sizes, so that's fine. Now what? We'll, now we're going to add a pseudo class. What is a pseudo class? It specifies a special state of the element, so hover, so when a it's only active or valid when a someone or the user hovers over an element. So we're going to have pseudo class selector. And then we're going to have image hover transform. Now we don't need to remember this. It's just we're just going to add a scale 1.1. So it scales by 10% more when we hover over it. Oh, look at that. And now if we want to make that smoother so it doesn't just clip, just instantly do that. We can type transition, transform, transform, 0 0.3 seconds ease. So just ease is a 
curve of the animation, it's an animation curve, and lasts for 0 0.3 seconds, you don't need to memorize this, transform is this property right here, you can also type more, so we're also going to have margin, now what is margin? Well margin, if we look at the CSS box model, we're only going to go over it for briefly here, so Go on computed, control shift C, margin 5 adds 5 pixels of padding around the element top, right, bottom, left, all around. You can have margin top, you can specify that, but there we go. So we have margin 5 pixels. Now there's another selector called the selector list. And what is the selector list? Well, instead of selecting or writing h1 margin 0, because we want to get rid of the margin here, if we press Control shift c on Chrome, hover over it, you see we have too much margin outside, which is pushing it away, and we don't want that, we want it closer together. So we type margin 0, and we can type that for p as well. That works, but... If we look, we're using the same body here for the selector twice. Now we can we only need to use that once, so we have h1p. We can just put a comma instead of defining two selector bodies here, I guess you can call them. But there we go. Now they're not so close together and it gets rid of all margin. We're going to have a class selector here. Now, what is a class selector? Well, what is a, cl a HTML class? That's it. Selects a HTML class, so we want to select round. So, dot round. So, border radius, as you can see, I've already put round on some of these. So, we add border radius, 10 pixels, and that selects all elements with class round. And now they're round, look at that. And the button is as well. There are some elements with class center, so we type center, text align, center now. I'm going to make a, a special centering with, I'm going to center with special, I, I don't know. So we have text align center, align the text in the center. Now, that does not align the button. We we type display block, and that will center that, and text align center, that will display, that will center the, all the text, and it seems to work for this button as well. That is cool. This is a utility class. And it's used in a lot of places like Bootstrap, and it's very helpful. So we can just add styles here if we want. If we want to make something round, you do it in here just by adding a class. But we don't need to do that. So, ID selector. Now, what is an ID selector? With an ID, it's assumed there's only one with that ID, so there's only one gallery. So we can type hashtag gallery, which selects that, and no other element has the ID gallery. It might do, but that would be a HTML problem, so we assume any one has it. And we type padding 50 pixels, and that does something. And then text align center, and that will center the images. For some reason it works for images as well which is pretty cool. So, now, specificity. That's a hard word to say, what is it? It's the means by which browsers decide which property values in CSS are the most relevant and which will be applied. So, there is, gallery has a an ID here of gallery. Technically, we just call it gallery because of its ID. So it has an ID here, and it, it's a section tag. So if we type section here, 
So gallery is considered more specific. Which one is going to win if we type padding at zero and remove it? Well, section is. And if we remove this, then padding zero is actually used. If it's not defined in gallery, this is used because it also selects the same element. It will overwrite the less specific selectors or CSS properties. So and to help you understand this, there is a link here in the description. So we don't need this, so we're going to get rid of it. Now, if I type gallery in here, hashtag gallery, that is the most specific are at the top. So this is one zero zero. Now if I type section, this is zero zero one and a hundred is greater than zero. Therefore, this property will overwrite or these properties with this selector will overwrite these in section. And there's with class, classes and attributes, pseudo classes, etc. You can type dot gallery. If we add a dot gallery here and a hashtag gallery, it would still, this will still overwrite the dot gallery, which is the class. So that's something to keep in mind. So hashtag will overwrite most selectors. And you can also combine hashtags to make it extremely specific. We can have loads of them. We get to 999 if we want, but I don't want to do that. So that's that. That's specificity. So let me show you something here. Color green. This is an attribute selector. We can define our own attributes here. So this is going to have color green. View more. So this is called an attribute selector here and we type brackets, square brackets, color equals green. Okay, and if it did not have an equals, if it did not have a value, we'd get rid of the equals and the value and just have that. But we have a value here, so what should we do here? We can set the background color, why not? To green or we can also set the actual text to green maybe this should go in the button like that and then we can set the text to green or white so it stands out and that will work so there we go now the descendant selector here so a so we type an element and we we type a selector here and we type another selector. So this selects an element, so whatever selector we have here. And then within that selector, we we have another selector. So if I have section and then I select the div, that will select this and then the div and all divs within the section. So let's do that. A button. Now because button is within A, so the child class goes after the parent class here, or the parent element in this case. So now border none. Margin, we're going to have border none, so we get rid of that. And then margin top, we can define it explicitly. 10px, 50 is too much. Padding 10px, we're using 10px everywhere, it seems. There we go. And it also has the class round. Now, the button doesn't do anything. So we can have cursor pointer. And if you want, you can have cur like a class that says cur cursor dash pointer. And define it like that. That's up to you. Hopefully, now, you know the basics of CSS. We've covered a lot. I'd say the most important that I use Basically, pretty much everything in here. If it's not in the video, there's more selectors which you can view here. I don't use them as much as the ones I have used in this video. These are the main ones that will help you with CSS. The other ones, 
I don't use as much, so these are the main ones that I use. And now you know the foundation and fundamentals of CSS.